right, welcome back to On Shape Orientation. This week we're going to be talking about the normal, the pierce, and the symmetric practice. So like always, let's get started by clicking the top plane, holding Shift and S to start a sketch, N to normalize those planes, and P to hide that plane. Um, so if we look, follow me up to the top, and we will see our normal, our pierce, and our symmetric. If I hold over normal, you'll see Shift and K is my shortcut key for that. And it says make a curve and line or a curve and plane perpendicular to one another. Same thing for Pierce, it's gonna be Shift and G. Uh, make a sketch entity coincide with one another entity outside the active sketch plane. So that's gonna require us to make two uh, sketches on completely different planes. And we'll show that here in a second. <clears throat> and our symmetric, which is Shift and Q, makes two entities of the same type symmetric relative to a line, plane, or linear edge. So we'll kind of show about how about doing that as well. Uh, but in order to start, let's get some geometry started. So we'll go up here and we'll start with a uh, circle. Just draw a circle, it doesn't need a dimension. And then I'm gonna draw a line, okay? What we know about these lines and these circles right now, they're not defined, they're just there. There's no dimensions, right? Um, but what we're going to do is that normal constraint. And what I want you to think of when you think normal, if we look at the um, icon, you'll see it's a curve with a black line off to the side. And it almost looks like it's perpendicular. And that's essentially what is going on here. So if we take this and I click my circle and my line and I come up and press normal or I press shift and K on the keyboard. You'll see I now have those two entities are perpendicular uh, to one another, okay? And you're like, well, how is a circle or a line perpendicular to a circle? Well, essentially what's going on here is if I were to move this uh, line back and forth, you'll see that it's kind of going through that, that center line, right? And how is this working? It's based off of, if I do a line here, and I say this line needs to be tangent, there and then if we made this uh, this line perpendicular to this line lock that into place there make this line and this line perpendicular you'll see that it's crossing and it's it's at that 90 degree angle um, and we're locking that dimension in. So if we were to look here, that's gonna be at a 90 because we told it to be perpendicular, but that line was coming off. Now, it's at a specific point to where it's gonna be normal to that circle. Okay, well, why would I wanna do it just to a circle? I could also do it to some curves. I can come up here and make a spline start from my origin and just kind of come around like this, give myself a fancy curve real quick, escape to leave that tool, let's make this a little bit bigger, there we go, and draw a line. I take normal, this line and this curve, now it's perpendicular to those curves. So it's gonna come in and you'll see how it crosses. If I were to move it, this now moves with it. So let's lock this in place. We'll learn this a little bit more next week, the fix command. But you'll see that it's it's crossing that arc at that side, okay? We undo. Let's make this fix. Let's get rid of that. Now I can move this freely. If I click here and here, go normal. It's going to now be normal to there. If I delete that and I had it kind of facing this way and I did this normal, you'll see it'll go normal in between those two points on that curve right there. So ultimately, wherever you want this to be normal, you're going to need to make this match whatever line segment or draw the line kind of in a way facing where 
you're already going. If I wanted it to be here, more between these two points, I can't draw it over here because it's gonna wanna go normal that way. So I'd need to draw a line here, tell this to be normal, and you'll see now I can make it normal to that curve up until I get to a certain spot because it's locked in with that origin point. So you'll see that it always wants to be perpendicular to that curve that we're making. So that's how you do the normal uh, constraint. Delete all that. All right, so after we delete all that geometry from here, what we're gonna wanna do is turn our planes back on. Let's zoom in a little bit. And with the Pierce constraint, what we need to do is draw on two separate planes. So we're gonna be drawing our path. We're gonna delete this uh, and click the front plane. You're not actually deleting and starting a new sketch. You're just starting it on a different spot. So we're gonna draw our sketch on the front plane so we can kind of see what's going on. And I'm gonna draw some big sweeping curves. Zoom out quite a bit. All right. So if we look from the front, you see I have this nice cinnamon roll pattern. Uh, we're gonna say, okay, we'll zoom back in to where all our planes meet. Um, and now I'm going to draw something on the right hand plane. So we'll start another sketch, we'll normalize, and you'll see that I'm going to try kind of draw cockeyed a little bit. If I were to draw a circle, it's real easy to just draw and put it matched up with the origin, right? And what would we want to do this for? If I click OK and do the sweep command to turn these into 3D objects, click that as my face, click my cinnamon roll swirl as my path, you'll see I now get a uh, extrusion that follows a specific path. So that being said, let's go back to our sketch two and let's change this into something that I can't quite use that, right? Maybe I don't want the center of the circle to match it, but I want the outside of the circle. So I need a 12 inch circle and I need it to pierce this uh, path, right? I don't want it to ride on the inside of that um, center of that circle. I want it to ride on the bottom or the tangent of that, right? Now from here, I can start making my geometry as such. Let's come in and cut out some lines, maybe this needs to be uh, vertical to that origin point. And I want to cut out here. We'll mirror that. Mirror over my front plane, we'll come in, we'll cut out. So now I have this V block type deal. Let's come back in and about here, cut out. And that's what we're making, all right? So we're good. Let's make that sweep. Both faces need to now sweep this pattern. We'll zoom out, let it do its thing. And you'll see, now I'm able to have that geometry match, let me shut those planes off real quick, in a way that I wouldn't be able to if I did that center. Yeah, I could have drawn it from that center point, but I wanted it exactly at that point pierced like that. Because now I want to be able to shut one half off and maybe look at it as a cross view. And maybe I'm using this as a, a way to 
uh, I'm going to 3D print something in two pieces or um, to be used for like a, a forging type deal or a cast casting some metal, whatever you're doing. Um, you're able to split things into two parts already pretty easily. That Pierce command is going to help you. I've seen it used quite a bit in some drafting uh, practice drawings. Um, but for me, it seems to always, after I pierce something, it almost always follows a sweep. Um, the good practice for that is like trying to do a coffee cup handle. Um, it'll wrap, you'll wreck your brain for a while. Something hard to wrap your brain around at first. But once you figure out that pierce command, this is what totally helps. Um, so let's go back to our sketch where we wrapped this. I'm going to shut my first sketch off because we already know what that's doing. Um, and some of you guys might have noticed I used that mirror command to flip that that over, right? Well, let's redraw this. Let's uh, get rid of those. I'll draw another circle from here to here. Just delete all my stuff inside. And it's okay. That's not going to be perfect to what I had before. I just kind of come up with dimensions on the fly. Let's make this and this pierce. And the dimension is 12. Normalize that. Hide sketch one. All right. So I did the mirror tool to drop that over. Uh, I wanted those lines to be a mirror image of one another, right? Well, what I could do is just draw one line draw another line and we know right now that's not a perfect mirror okay i can come up and say symmetric and i want this line and this line to be symmetric over this center line and you'll see by clicking all three now they are symmetrical so if i were to move one ever they will always move together they're symmetrical it doesn't matter the length in them the angles are still going to be symmetrical. So if I came out here and then gave it another rule, said, hey, this always needs to coincide with that circle. Same here. That always needs to coincide with that circle. Now, it doesn't matter where I move these. It's always going to be symmetrical to one another. So some cool geometry you can set up um now same thing i want to do some circles let's do a circle here and a circle down here give it the rule of it always needs to coincide with that line and this circle point always needs to coincide here you also give it another rule let's see what this does let's say this always has to tangent the inside and this always has to tangent the inside but then we tell it that both circles and this line need to be symmetrical across that axis okay so if I were to move these circles, you'll see it kind of, we start running into some issues where they always have to follow that line and they always have to be tangent to that circle be, and be symmetrical to one another. So kind of get some pretty trippy, crazy patterns that start to go on. Um, we can come in here and start trimming all this. Now, if I wanted to have this follow our sweep, same uh, edge, there we go. And say, okay. Now, shut my, turn my part back on we are following that same path and those things are symmetrical. So if I were to come back to my drawing, change where that circle went or change uh, the length of that and say, okay, everything changes accordingly because we have added that symmetrical constraint across that center point line. Um, some constraints that we use today aren't the typical way I like to use these things. Um, if I'm going to use symmetrical, we're just going to start a new part studio real quick uh, to show this very easily. If I'm going to be doing 
symmetrical stuff, I always try to tie it to some geometry. So if I'm going to do things I want symmetrical, like for holes or whatever, I'm going to do a rectangle, I'm going to make it construction. And I know for a fact that if this is a four and this is an eight, that my holes are always going to be symmetrical. If I base them off of points that are off a shape that is already symmetrical. So squares and rectangles have symmetry built into them. Circles, um, depending on where you put things on that circle, if you put them on the, the, you know, the cardinal directions, that'll end up being symmetrical for you too. Um, the way I kind of draw, I just kind of automatically do that. Um, normal and Pierce, like I said, Pierce is if you're using, you're going from 2D to 3D, it helps a lot when you're doing that sleeping pattern, but normal, I'm not going to lie. I've hardly ever used normal. It has its purposes, but in everyday drawing, I probably use horizontal, vertical and coincident more than anything. So, uh, that's going to do it for us this week. Um, I don't have a practice drawing for you this week, but I will post a link to a, uh, shortcut key file that I've made. Uh, I'm working on getting, some uh, mouse pads made. I have a couple made for myself and my students and they really, really like them. Um, trying to see if we can get some out to you guys. If that's something you'd be interested in, drop a comment below. Uh, next week, we'll be talking about our last two constraints. We have the uh, fix, which I used a little bit today, and the curvature uh, constraint. So we'll take care of those next week. Then we'll be done. And then I think we got some good news coming, uh, trying to work on some practice drawings and hopefully some uh, other interesting things coming. I got some things in the work that I can't quite talk about yet, but hopefully you guys are staying tuned and subscribing and you'll get all those notifications once we send them out. So that's going to do it for us today. You guys have a nice day.